All right. It works. Yes, probably. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Artem. I'm sales lead at 24 Soft, and this is Anatoly. He's the CEO of our company. Where uh, came here from Ukraine uh, to feel the power of Canadian Drupal community because we have some clients here and we wanted to share some experience that uh, we faced during our cooperation with the companies based in North America and maybe to hear some ideas from your sites how to improve all these processes and uh, to deploy an external production team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as Artem said, we came here from Ukraine and uh, we are proud uh, to represent Drupal Ukraine community. It's, uh, actually, we have an organization uh, published on Drupal.org and there are 20, 222 people on Drupal.org already who actually has uh, not only the company where they are working, but also Drupal Ukraine community and they are contributing uh, support in different projects and contributing uh, using credits uh, for, in, for, uh, for Ukraine, uh, Drupal Ukraine community. So it's actually, as you see the digits, it's um, 124 projects supported. That's a lot. And uh, only for three latest uh, months, there are 185 issues fixed by Drupal Ukraine community developers. And this is actually low season, it's summer, summertime, so it's usually it's much more. And uh, if you open all the uh, commits, it's around 12 pages of, uh, of listings with all the commits from Drupal Ukraine community and this is like, I don't know, it's around three or four years old, it just uh, was uh, launched uh, on Drupal.org, so it's actually rising. And we have, um, we also were part of organization team of Drupal Camp Kiev, it's a regular event and we, that was actually our anniversary, so we have, we had uh, 10th Drupal Camp Kiev and uh, we had uh, 390 attendees at this uh, camp. Uh, the majority from Ukraine, but still uh, some people from different countries and we also had some representatives from Canada and uh, there was a keynote from uh, mm, uh, from CTO of ImageX from Vancouver so that the, we are really pleased to, to meet uh, our Canadian um, partners as well. Yeah, so we tried to make our Ukrainian Drupal community international and some of the sessions we had in English, majority in Ukrainian and Russian, but I performed in English. Uh, if to talk about any for soft, so who we are? We are Drupal focused agency, obviously. We are based fully in Ukraine. We have 60 plus teammates and our main approach is uh, not to work with the end clients, but we prefer to help uh, Drupal agencies, primarily from Western Europe or North America, to handle uh, all the clients requests, all the new clients requests uh, with our help if they struggle with the lack of uh, internal capacity. And recently uh, we've launched an uh, internship uh, internally uh, where we hired uh, like brand new people who has some basic understanding of PHP and we learned them uh, Drupal practices and probably uh, we believe that in six months we can uh, allocate to them uh, like commercial project and they'll become junior Drupal developers. So we have primarily uh, mid and senior Drupal developers out of uh, these 60 teammates we have 30 Drupal developers so part of them are seniors, the majority are mids and we have some uh, junior Drupal developers. Right. Uh, okay, so um, we also wanted to ask uh, you uh, what are the challenges for agencies, for developers uh, when the agency rely only on internal workforce, like, do you have any ideas? Have you tried to? Uh, I, I don't know. Do, do you have any issues or challenges working with only internal resources? Just raise a hand. Okay. okay. So for me, I'm from the government of Canada, uh, so hiring like a full-time government worker is like a very bureaucratic process. Uh -huh. And because it's the federal government, most people need to speak English and French, and so you kind of limit your development tool right there. So we do a lot of consultants and a lot of things. It's difficult to actually understand. Okay, thanks. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, if we get a client request uh, for a, a project that they need to start really quickly, we don't always have the, uh, the staff available, so that's a challenge. So we're having a just on a basis. Mm -hmm. any, any other thoughts? 
Okay. Uh, so yes, you are definitely right. So one of the challenge is uh, capacity when you actually need to start new project uh, right now or in, in one week and the customer is really relying on you that you, you will start uh, right away and uh, all your developers are already uh, engaged in project and you need somebody to join the team and it's actually the long process to hire. And uh, another, so it's actually, and when you try to hire a developer in your city, that there is a very limited uh, talent pool, and there's, and so, lots of the majority of developers are already working somewhere, and to to start all this process of hiring, this is actually it takes a really long time, and uh, for some customers, uh, cost is also um, a challenge because uh, hire full-time developer, and you you are not sure about. Uh, Will will be will there be enough work to continue after the project when the project will be deployed, uh, like for hiring for just one project and then firing pe people? It's not a good way to, to have to have business, um, and also all this all the taxes and all the additional spends and things like you need to to buy a laptop, you need to to buy uh, some furniture to, and you need a new office if you if you already not have any any other space. So this is uh, the the most common challenges that um, agencies face uh, when they uh, rely only on internal workforce. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, most of the businesses, they want to grow their internal power. But there, uh, there are some cases when you have urgent requests, as you said, from the client, and it's so harmful for the business to, uh, to lose this client. And there are some options how you can uh, support your business growth with external development resources. And what are the key constraints when uh, especially business owners, they consider uh, the option of external help? First of all, it's the level of communication. We've heard a lot from uh, our clients, uh, our brand new clients, that uh, their previous experience working with the development partners, uh, they're pretty poor because they were not at the same page and communication level was uh, really poor. Uh, second option is quality. Uh, I think that uh, when you cooperate with developers from Eastern Europe, uh, quality goes by default. And we have uh, a lot of Ukrainian developers that work in Canadian Drupal agencies, in US-based Drupal agencies, and most of the feedback from their teammates that the quality is uh, quite great. Uh, and if to talk about uh, processes, uh, in the companies that uh, the, the company that's not the part of your business, uh, it's different processes, and you it it uh, it should take some time to have the match between the processes and to synchronize uh, and to synchronize all the processes, and make it the same as you have internally. If to talk about security, um, all the clients they really um, they really care about the. Uh, safeguard of, of the data that they share with uh, with the vendors and uh, from our side we should guarantee that the risk for this aspect uh, would be minimized okay and uh, there are options when you decide like you you need to hire somebody uh, outside of your company for this specific project for for some specific time of um, some specific time there are options so first of all there are a bunch of freelancers there are great uh, uh, tools uh, great uh, platforms where you can find freelancer and you also know uh, some developers in your in your city or uh, somebody you met uh, on some Drupal events uh, and um, so this is an option to hire a freelancer and uh, another option is to actually have a contract with some agency who can help you uh, with uh, with your capacity uh, and uh, what are the what are the issues uh, and what are the challenges when you decide between freelancers and agency uh, first of all is responsibility uh, the main uh, concerns that we heard uh, from our partners that uh, the they try to work with some freelancers and uh, somewhere in between of the project, uh, this freelancer is gone. And this is uh, the, the, the most um, important issue that uh, you rely on, on somebody. And if this person actually gone, you, you need to start all the process again to check, uh, to interview, to check the quality of this specific person. And this is actually, and could be really harmful for your organization because you already have the contract with your customer and you need to deliver the projects in time. Uh, when you uh, 
when you start a communication with agency, uh, the responsibility for uh, not to be lost is a little bit higher because you you actually have the contract with the organization with. Uh, uh, and the organization actually has uh, more resources and if somebody gone, it could be whatever reason, uh, the person who might change the plans uh, and might go to work with Joomla or maybe he, he wants to switch to Laravel uh, or he just fell in and the agency always has uh, somebody to as a backup to help. Uh, um, so this is uh, really much more flexible. And in terms of uh, risks, uh, uh, this is again about uh, not being lost, but also uh, when you need, uh, when you understand that you need uh, more more people uh, to, to to join your your team, like the customer uh, asked that uh, we need to deploy the project uh, uh, one month earlier, and you need somebody to to help you to fit this new deadline. This is. Uh, Sometimes uh, you can just rely on the contract, but sometimes it's uh, good to have somebody who can uh, join your team uh, right like uh, on the next week and help you to to bring this in life. So um, there are always uh, the pros and cons in uh, uh, when, when you go to with one direction or another. So this is uh, something you need to take in mind. Uh, and if to talk about the small Drupal agencies, uh, when I mean small, it's starting from one-man shop up to 10 people. Um, it's always an issue with internal resources and brand new clients, it's so crucial for your uh, company prosperity. And uh, what are the main issues that uh, business owners of small companies face this with? Uh, first of all, uh, these founders, they're in charge of everything and they should handle all the processes because they don't have other people to manage this. I mean, uh, those people, they should be in charge of project management, they even develop some, some of these projects and they should uh, do some sales efforts to make this company grow, right? Uh, and if to talk about new business opportunities, when, uh, when those owners, they uh, struggle with these internal activities, they just don't have enough time to uh, push a lot of efforts and bring new clients to their company. Uh, if to talk about operations consultancy, uh, if you have a small business, you don't have enough experience uh, to figure out what, uh, what internal processes should be. And uh, when you uh, ask uh, another agency that is much, uh, much bigger for the help, uh, these agencies, they can help you to uh, build these processes and to share their experience uh, in uh, internal iteration between different uh, departments of, of the company. Okay, and there are all, always uh, some uh, choices uh, for a uh, different approach of work. Uh, you can rely on your partner, on your external development team uh, as uh, you can share the full project with all the activities uh, starting from design and uh, finishing with deployment uh, or you can actually uh, get some uh, workforce uh, like uh, developers who actually uh, understand to what exactly uh, you need for this project and they have enough skill set uh, to, to work with you and can they can handle your operations. Uh, uh, this is also an option. So uh, if we compare a fixed price model with a dedicated team, there are also pros and cons. And um, when we talk about risks uh, and uh, the majority of risks when you go with a fixed price is on vendor side. And uh, when uh, you uh, have a dedicated model, uh, the risk are being um, shared with the customer and the risk and control this is uh, always uh, on. Uh, this is more on uh, on your side, and you can actually control the velocity of the team. You can control uh, the direction of the way the project is going. And um, but uh, this is also uh, depend on what the project is. If 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 you have fixed scope and uh, you have uh, really. Um, small amount of time to work on this project and you need somebody to help to this project being done it's just uh, not a really complex not the not the project of from your key customers you can just share this project to, to somebody to make it uh, to make it done and uh, when you have uh, some flexible scope of work and you work uh, 
or in an agile way with your customer and uh, you also need this flexibility in terms of budget, scope and time and team uh, so you can actually rely on a dedicated team model. Sometimes uh, there is another model as uh, time and materials when you just pay for only for hours uh, spent and this is uh, also works pretty really good. And you have your management staff, you have uh, your quality assurance, uh, and uh, you have your processes in place. And uh, this is a really nice model. And actually, in the long run, this um, dedicated team could be as uh, part of your organization, but it's just uh, sitting in another office. And uh, as I mentioned, the client involvement is uh, also different. For a fixed price model, it's actually only acceptance period when you have uh, the complete project uh, and you accept it uh, if it is uh, good or it, if something needs to be finished and uh, if you dedicate a team your client involvement you, your involvement is uh, the most so you you in, in the whole process uh, and change change requirements uh, uh, this is all, always uh, uh, being placed in every project uh, if you have any change requests uh, from the customer uh, there is always negotiation process if uh, uh, with uh, fixed price model, and it's much more flexible if you work uh, in a de dedicated team model. Yeah, just wanted to add to the previous slide when you start cooperation with brand new development partner, um, uh, and and you decide to share the full project, the level of risk that. Uh, you might have is really high and uh, in most cases I hear from potential clients that uh, they have internal policy not to share the project at the same time you can just hire developers from other agencies and leave all the internal processes uh, all the Drupal approach uh, all the ways on your side uh, and in this case you just have addition to your internal capacity and uh, those uh, tasks, those issues, they will be done uh, based on your internal flow. Uh, and actually we had in our title uh, at the very beginning um, mentioned about case study and we wanted to share some, uh, some experience that we had not so far with uh, one of our uh, California based clients. Uh, not to tell it on the words, but to, to give you some examples. At the same time, uh, I think that you're aware that in our business, uh, most of our projects we have under a day. That's why we don't have like the actual uh, pictures of the website or something, but we're uh, more than happy to share some internal technical and business uh, insights that we had during this project. So as I mentioned, this uh, client based in California and uh, the industry that they have, it's in beauty, in cosmetics, and this is just e-commerce startup. Uh, yeah, they have, um, we met them actually uh, while uh, on Drupal, DrupalCon Nashville uh, this spring, and um, they, come, they come to the event uh, to, uh, to find the partner who can actually help them with the development. And uh, they already have uh, poor experience with working with other development partners from, uh, uh, from Asia. I, I, see, I believe uh, the previous platform was based in Joomla. Uh, yes, sometimes it's happened. And, um, and that when, uh, th then the customer uh, decided to find uh, somebody who can actually, uh, who's, uh, who can be in charge of uh, all the technical process. And uh, he found the local uh, CTO. Uh, who is in charge of development and uh, we have enough luck uh, that this uh, this uh, particular person is a uh, Drupal developer and that's why he um, actually decided to switch the whole platform to Drupal and then they went to DrupalCon to find a partner who to work with and uh, and as, as it always uh, happened in business they had a really strict deadline because they need to rewrite the whole platform uh, to to a new one and they have a lot of functionality in mind uh, to, to be deployed and that's why um, they, and they actually the, the, it is for work in business that's why they their customers were waiting for some uh, functionality to, to to work with that this is actually like um, a network of uh, uh, different um, suppliers of uh, of the cosmetics and they, this is actually the portal who is uh, who counts the money and uh, that is uh, that was a huge challenge. They need to find some reliable partner who can, who is experienced enough not only perform the 
development, but also think about the money and the, this, the security level uh, that is related to this matter. Yeah, and uh, ultimately they chose uh, our company. And uh, why we think they chose us? First of all, they had uh, strong requirements to choose Drupal, uh, Drupal focused company, Drupal experts, and we ensured that based on the uh, interviews that uh, these clients had with our Drupal developers. Uh, they also wanted this provider uh, to be able to scale the internal team. Uh, and initially we started with one developer and after that uh, during the sprints we added more and more developers and uh, they, they also required not only the development mindset but also solution orientation and business orientation and that's why we also attract uh, not only developers but account managers, project coordinators who communicate directly with uh, the client and listen to the uh, business goals of this startup and uh, uh, th they try to paraphrase uh, all these business goals uh, to, to the development solutions from our side. So ultimately our developers, they realize all these uh, business opportunities to the uh, features, to the development aspects and bring it to life. Uh, what is the solution? The solution that we offer, uh, as we already mentioned, we uh, offer them to hire a dedicated team and uh, the, the first process was uh, interviewing the developers that uh, uh, fit the most. Uh, so we had in place, uh, we uh, team onboarding, smooth uh, team onboarding process. When we started with uh, first developer, and then in two weeks uh, they uh, wanted to get another developer uh, to, to join, uh, to, to make a velocity uh, higher. And uh, mm, the project monetization based, uh, based on the quick launch was uh, really important for them they, because they wanted to not not to make it like perfectly this, as it is a startup, they wanted to launch it in the most efficient way uh, so they actually uh, can get uh, monetization processes uh, up and running. And uh, the most important uh, was that uh, we actually allow the, the customer to, uh, to meet their business goals because uh, they wanted, uh, they had uh, so, such a big process of uh, challenges and problems with uh, technology and they think about a lot of about the technology uh, but not about the business. We have to talk about the current status. Do you remember that we've started only with one developer? At this time we have five full-time developers. Uh, additionally we have project manager and tester. Uh, so uh, we have some scope of work that was previously released. That's why we provide uh, maintenance services and at the same time uh, we receive on the regular basis brand new uh, requirements uh, so we realize them and apply to the live website uh, and uh, we also uh, experience the business growth uh, so potentially we'll have the extension of the uh, company and uh, we also guaranteed uh, the extension of the uh, clients incoming to the to, to our clients business yeah and what are the perspectives that uh, clients share already with us uh, they they actually uh, started to think uh, about scalability of their business and they are uh, always wanted to go international so this is actually US based uh, company and US market is pretty huge uh, to handle but they already think about uh, um, about um, South America, about Europe, and they actually now they have uh, new, uh, new user stories and new functionalities that should be placed uh, to work or to go to international market. And uh, the, we always um, take in mind that uh, the development team is uh, flexible. So yeah, when uh, the when the peaks, uh, when the new functionality arises, so we can add uh, another developer to to help the team. And if they uh, is the there are the major, the major feature already released that we can uh, make uh, the team smaller to handle the project maintenance um, and uh, just to, to, to work on ongoing tasks. And um, now, uh, business owner, uh, there are actually two business owners and uh, one of them was always uh, involved in the day-to-day -day operations uh, and thinking about um, 
how actually um, all the calculations should be done and there, there was um, a lot of calculations were, uh, were made in uh, Google spreadsheets uh, and now they are, uh, as soon as uh, they automated this process, they actually can think about the uh, business development and um, uh, now the, the client customers all already share that they expected to have uh, an order from China with the production uh, in uh, six months, but they already made this order because uh, all the all the goods were already sold out. Yeah, and to sum up briefly, let's imagine that you become uh, this customer if you are not a business owner, uh, and how it goes to turn it for some. So from the very beginning, you as the customer, you'll want a brand new project, and after that, you check internally uh, that you don't that you cannot handle it uh, inside the company. And uh, this is actually the place for us to help. Uh, from the very beginning, we'd like to receive from our clients a request for proposal, including all the information that you have uh, from the initial request. And uh, after that, we provide you the proposal, which uh, contains detailed estimation spreadsheet with all the uh, budget and hours allocation for each specific feature, uh, timeline, and uh, budget for the project in total. Uh, after that, we usually sign uh, basic uh, documents uh, which contains of contract, uh, SOW, it's uh, additional agreement for the specific project, and NDA it's for you to be secured for the copyrights. Um, after that, we start the development phase uh, itself, and all the communication goes between uh, the client and either project manager or developer directly. Uh, after that, not after that, during all the processes, uh, our clients, even if we cooperate on the fixed cost projects, they are active uh, watcher, uh, they attend status calls on the regular basis, and uh, they are more than uh, available to apply some adjustments during the development phase as well. Uh, as soon as we deliver the project, we also provide post-production support and maintenance, uh, not only hosting services, but also adding of uh, some ad additional functionality to the project. And uh, after that, after the repetition of this circle for several times, we believe that uh, we, we build uh, the, the trust between our agencies and we become uh, trusted development partners. So the ultimate goal of our collaboration with Drupal agencies is to build uh, trusted development partnership uh, and uh, not only in cases when you face the lack of uh, internal resources but on the regular basis uh, combining like internal growth of resources and usage of uh, development partners uh, grows your uh, guarantees the growth of your uh, Drupal business. Right. Yeah, let me add uh, to this slide as well. Uh, so actually, uh, you can rely on your partner, on your external development partner, not only when you have uh, all the documentation uh, in place, when you have all the requirements on, on all the design of wireframes. Uh, the best way is to involve uh, the partner on the very beginning when you just have uh, a decision from uh, the customer or you uh, in the process of negotiations when you um, uh, talk to the customer about the new project and um, there is a really uh, a long path uh, to uh, to actually start the development. Uh, b before that, you need to, to have a really good discovery phase to understand the needs of the of the customer to build the wireframes, to build the, the user journeys, and understand what exactly the, pro the projects uh, should be. Uh, this time, a lot of uh, migrations and upgrades uh, being in place, and uh, uh, there is also a really good. Uh, uh, Processes could be and uh, efforts could be done on your external partner side, so you can communicate more with your customer, and uh, work could be done uh, on the other side. And uh, to have uh, some kind of conclusions, uh, uh, the main idea that we had uh, uh, for this session is uh, it's. Uh, uh, you, you just never, you, you should have not to, to close the door for any opportunities, opportunities because the new projects uh, 
that comes in uh, from the customers, from your inbound marketing. Uh, you can uh, sometimes deny these uh, projects, but you never know what exactly this business uh, grow, what exactly this request uh, could be at the, at the, at the final phase. So when you have new opportunities, uh, you can uh, talk to uh, other uh, agencies and to collaborate. So success is possible only with collaboration. This is the same as like you, you work uh, only as a single person and you do all the process uh, yourself or you have some teammates and you, this is the same as uh, you, you have your internal resources in your uh, agency and uh, collaboration with other, with other people could do could bring your business to the next level. Uh, but the really important uh, point is uh, try carefully. Don't uh, put all, all the eggs in one basket. Don't um, allow, uh, don't just um, trust from the first uh, uh, world. You need to actually to try, uh, to try first, to make some trial period, to, to launch some small projects beforehand. So if you actually expect that in the next uh, quarter you will have uh, more projects you need to prepare beforehand to have some uh, test assignments and understand uh, if this if this agency if these people are actually reliable if they deliver the results that they are saying about uh, so try try carefully but uh, still expect that uh, collaboration can bring you uh, more benefits yeah and this is pretty it in terms of the presentation uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, not only the decision makers, the business owners, maybe for the developers it was also topical, especially if you work with uh, developers from other agencies outside of your company and you face those issues on the regular basis, maybe some of our thoughts, uh, they were interesting for you and you can apply it uh, on your uh, daily basis workflow. Uh, Please, uh, if you have any questions, any topical information, do not hesitate to contact us uh, at this email. And if you have some uh, current questions, we'll be happy to answer. Yep. Go ahead. How, do you, how does your dev team work with uh, another agency dev? I didn't actually explain, like, you guys uh, get on conference calls every day, do you send documents back to yeah, the first in the first place, we ask our partner to share the uh, knowledge base and the workflows uh, that uh, they already have in uh, their company because, like, uh, we need to understand the expectation in the first place, uh, to, and uh, we also need to use the tools that they already they, they already use. Like, if they use Jira and they use uh, Slack internally, so they, we, we need also the profiles for the, the development team to join these uh, channels, these teams, and uh, get acquaintance with all the documentation, with all the workflow that is already in, the, in this agency. Sometimes if the agency is small, as we mentioned beforehand, the, some collaboration processes could not be managed yet, like because they don't didn't need this, they just launched the project and work via FTP. Sometimes it's actually happened, and we still fighting with one of the uh, customer to bring Git in place because working uh, on the production environment via FTP is not the best way. And uh, yeah, so, so this is where we can help with uh, setting up some processes, some continuous integration to be to have some auto deployments, not to waste time for. Um, uh, manual deployments and merging. Uh, so yeah. So first of all, we try to get information from the customer, understand what is uh, what is the tool set, what is the process uh, is uh, good for for them, and then we can uh, consult uh, uh, what uh, the best practices we, we have internally and what the best practices we have from the other customers. And uh, yeah, we set up uh, uh, regular calls. Uh, so it's actually day-to-day uh, uh, -day meetings. Uh, uh, discussing the project and uh, also you know, when we have some uh, sprints, uh, sprint, sprint planning and also acceptance uh, demos. So this is actually mostly it's going via uh, Google Meet or Google Hangouts or Skype for business or just a regular Skype. So this is not, not a big problem. Sometimes uh, our customers expect uh, to us to go over to their office and to collaborate in, in face to face. This is also possible, uh, so, but the online tools are pretty good now to, for this moment to, to help all, everything remotely. And like for our, for, for our agency, we also 
uh, have like remote first culture, so we uh, don't. Um, as we try not to stick our, our team to the, to the offices. We actually have two offices in Kharkiv and Lusk, and this is uh, around uh, 700 kilometers for, between the cities. So we, we actually have all these processes in place uh, when we develop uh, the whole pro project uh, internally. So yeah, remote culture is uh, pretty flexible. And, and you mentioned you had a team of like five people. Um, what was the yeah, for this uh, specific uh, customer, we, we have a uh, product owner on the customer side. So th th they actually have um, uh, three people uh, from uh, their core team. So they, there is a business owner, there is a product owner who is uh, talking about the features and uh, accepting the features and the ideas of the project. And there is uh, still a CTO who is actually uh, taking care about the, the technology is, uh, the, the in, is in the way that they need. And uh, from our side, uh, it is five, uh, five, five full-time developers. Uh, we have a uh, team lead who is uh, managing the, our development team and talks primarily with product owner and CTO and uh, getting uh, um, the decision about how, how, it should be, how it should be done. And uh, we have project manager who helps to organize all the process, the ticketing system and the uh, uh, deliverables to be done. And we have a tester who, who check everything if this actually working as expected and it's the build as designed. This is the structure of the team. So, automation testing or manual testing? Uh, for, for this moment, it's only manual testing. So we have uh, compatibility testing, we have functional testing, and uh, the automatization testing is uh, like in the future release. And uh, how many times you? Uh, your company already successfully went through this whole nice circle which was on one of previous slides. Yeah, this is uh, uh, for, for, the, for this session, it's a bit confusing. We talk more about the collaboration with uh, end customer, and this is not a regular practice for, uh, for us. So we primarily work in with agencies. That's why this circle is uh, the most common examples that we tend to have with all our customers because we came. Uh, we start collaboration with some agency, and if we uh, have a successful project uh, in the in f for the first project, then we can uh, circle back and do more and more projects and set up more and more teams and development. So this is the key for us uh, to make it not uh, as a pass but as a circle. Any other questions? All right, then thanks a lot for your time here. It was really a pleasure to perform at Drupal Mars. It's our first experience here. And you guys are very welcome to Ukrainian Drupal events as well. Why not? Thanks a lot. Thanks.